Hi guys, it's Haley from TutorialEdge.net and welcome to the 8th tutorial in my programming 2D Pong with LWJGL3 tutorial series. In this tutorial I will be showing you how to implement some simple OpenGL shaders. Ok, so first of all we're going to need to extend the functionality of our utilities class and add a new function which will handle loading in a shader source code, attaching it to a shader object and then compiling and returning the ID of our newly loaded shader. So, Right at the top of our utilities class we're going to go public static int load shader and it's going to take in the string for the file path and it's going to take, take in the type of shader ok and we're going to add just at the top string builder result equals new string builder Try buffered reader, reader equals new, buffered reader, new file reader, and pass in the file path. Okay, so create a new string while buffer equals reader dot read line not equal to null result dot append buffer and then result dot append slash n just so we get a new line ok finish that off with a catch exception e and sys e and if you're on windows you can do control space and then enter and then we're just going to print out E. So we're going to need to import buffer reader and file reader as well as the IO exception. Okay. So what this basically does is it takes in the file path of a shader and then basically takes in all the source code from that file and creates it as one big string. And this will be useful because and this will allow us to pass it in to a shader object that we will create just now. So in shader id equals gl create shader and this is where we're passing the type that we want to create. And next we're going to attach the source. So gl shader source source shader id result dot to string and we're going to just quickly import the appropriate libraries. So import static org.lwjgl.opengl.gl30.star. And we're also going to import 20 and 11 just for good measure, just in case. Ok, so GL attach shader source. Um, so we've created our shader object and we've attached the source code to this shader. Next what we're going to want to do is compile this shader and we can do that by calling GL compile shader and passing in the ID of our shader object. So just to double check that that's all gone off without a hitch, we do GL get shader i shader id gl compile status equals gl false and basically this says if the compile status is false then we're going to print out the errors so sys e gl get shader info log and pass in the id and how many lines we want to see of that log Next we're going to want to do sys e and nice and informational not compile shader and we're going to next return negative 1 to show that it failed. Ok so now that we've done that we want to return the int reference id of our shader and that's all we need. Okay. 
Okay, so now that we've created the functionality to load in and compile a shader, we're going to create a shader class in our graphic engine package. So right click on graphic engine and create new class and call it shader. And this shader is going to have a constructor that will take in the string file path of our vertex file and the string file path of our fragment shader. And we're going to create a few ID variables at the top. So int program ID, private int vertex shader ID, private int fragment shader ID. Okay, so vertex shader ID is going to be equal to load shader. This is the function that we called, uh, created in our utility class load shader and we're going to pass in the vertex file path and we're going to set the type to equal vertex shader and just up at the top we're going to create our imports so static utils dot utilities dot star okay and next we're going to want to import static org dot lwjgl dot open gl dot gl 20 dot star and we are also going to want to import static org dot lwjgl dot open gl dot gl 30 dot star okay so we've done this for the vertex shader and we're going to want to do this for the fragment shader as well so fragment file and this is going to be the gl fragment shader and remember to change this to fragment shader id okay so now that we've done that we're going to want to create a new program and we can do that by saying program id equals to gl create program and that's all we need Okay, so we're going to attach our newly loaded in shaders to this program. So gl attach shader, pass in our program ID that we've just created up here, and pass in our vertex shader ID. And we're going to do the same for our fragment shader as well. Okay. And next what we're going to want to do is link the program and then validate the program and we can do that by the following. So gl link program, program id and gl validate program, program id again. Okay, so that's all our constructor needs right now. And next thing we're going to want to do is create a few helper methods. So the first one is going to be public void start and it's going to use gl use program program id and we're going to want to create public void stop and it's going to use gl use program and zero okay okay so we're not quite done with the shader class we're going to create another couple of functions so public void, oh no, public int, sorry, get id, and we're going to return the program.id, so return this.programid, and we're also going to create a public int get uniform variable, so string name and int result equals gl get uniform location program id and name and if this fails or if the results equals to negative one then sissy could not find uniform variable Name. 
Okay, and finally we're going to return jail get uniform vacation. Oh no, we could. The result. As we've already called that up here. Okay. And just fix that. Okay, and lastly we're going to want to create another method called public void set uniform 3f. And that's going to take in the uniform variable name and our vector 3f position. Call this position actually. Okay, so we're going to want to import our vector 3f class. Okay, so gl uniform 3f get uniform name and vector vector dot x oh no, position dot x position dot y and position dot z okay and that's all we need for the shader class and just quickly fix the error there and that's it done now that our shader class is done, we can actually move on to creating our shaders. So we're going to go to new package and we're going to have a package called shaders. And within this shaders package, we're going to create two new files. And the first one is going to be vertex.shader. And I'm just going to pass in a very simple vertex shader to this. Now I wouldn't worry too much about the code here as of yet. Um, I'll be going into more description about what it does in um, another tutorial and I'll link that in the in the description below and again we're going to create the fragment shader so file new other file and fragment fragment dot shader and just rename that quickly Okay, and again, it's just going to be a nice symbol, GLSL shader. Okay. Okay, so now that we've done the shader, um, we're going to want to have to create a class that manages all the shaders because typically with games, you'll have multiple shaders within the game. So it's a good idea to have a class that handles and loads them out for you. So I'm going to go into the graphic engine and create a new class called Shader Manager. Okay, and basically every shader that will be available in our game engine will be initialized here. So just to demonstrate that, we're going to do public static shader1 and we're going to create a static void load all function down here. And shader1 equals new shader and we're going to pass in the location of our shader files. So I've done it in the shaders packages, so it'll be found in source slash shaders slash vertex dot shader and we also want to want to do the fragment shader which is very similar. So source slash shaders slash fragment dot shader. Okay. So within our level class, we're going to want to have a shader manager. So shader manager, manager, shader manager, and import that from our graphic engine class. Shader manager equals new shader manager. And then we're going to want to call shader manager dot load all. Okay, so just to demonstrate that our shaders now work, we're going to come down here and do shader manager dot shader one dot start, and then after we're going to do shader manager dot shader one dot stop. Okay, so that should transform our white ball, previously white ball, to a green ball now. 
and if we made that a wee bit bigger, if we go into the ball glass and make this say one 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 and make this negative 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 and negative negative you should see that for every vertex in our game it changes to different colors as it pro as it progresses towards that vertex okay so that's all for this tutorial and if you found this tutorial useful or helpful at all then please leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more LWJGL3 tutorials. Cheers.